Mars. Skylip. Greetings. Um, I wanted to know uh, how I can prevent myself from sounding like I'm engaging in parlor games with people when I'm explaining philosophy. For example, I had a Marine who I was telling, talking to, and I said, A is A. And I said, it's like saying, God is like saying, or saying there's a God is like saying there's a there's a letter before A. And his eyes widen, like he, like he grasps something he never really understood before. But if I tell that to somebody else, they're like, oh, well, you can say that's the alphabet and things like that nature. So how do I explain myself um, through philosophy without having it seem like it's a parlor game? I mean, you have to, um, I think the most important thing is you have to really concretize and you have to really give real world examples. You have to use um, stories or events or things going on in the world that they are experiencing or that they are familiar with that illustrate the point in a, in a very real way. I almost never say something like A is A. Because it's, um, for example, because it's it's too much of a gotcha for people. And what you really want is to explain. What you really want is to walk them through it. Walk them through, you're actually advocating for a contradiction. Let me, let me show you the contradiction that you have. And if at the end of the day, they basically say, yeah, I see the contradiction and I don't care, then what's the point of talking to them, right? If somebody's willing to accept contradictions, they're hopeless. So, you know, a premise of any kind of debate where you're trying to convince the other side is the contradictions don't exist. If if they accept the contradictions exist, there's no point in debating Hegel. He loves contradictions. He thinks contradictions is the essence of reality. So what are you going to prove? How can you use logic? You can't. Logic is out. Logic is immediately gone. So, uh, uh, so you know, walk them through the steps. Walk them carefully through the steps and make sure that you're using realistic, viable examples. It becomes a parlor game when the examples are, you know, like what, what philosophers do all the time, like trolley examples. You're on a trolley and you could go fight people over here or one person over here. Who would you rather kill? Well, what if one of the fight people happens to be your grandmother? Who do you kill now? I mean, who cares? I mean, it's a, I'm not on the trolley and I'm never gonna be on the trolley. So why are we even bothering talking about this? You want to give examples that are relevant to their life or relevant to the world around them where they can see it playing out, not examples that are hypotheticals that are meaningless. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Sure.